The lack of originality in modern literature, written with Matt Turner circa 2009. When did we sacrifice literature for entertainment? Was it before or after Hollywood and the record labels sold their souls and began to churn out mindless, meaningless rubbish? All too often we find that new novels are constructed by formula. Today, if we pay a visit to our local library, it can be a challenge to find a genuine work of literature. To find Dickens and Shakespeare, we must walk past shelves of ghost-written autobiographies and Barbara Cartland novels. The library used to be the safe haven of the intellectual, but the intellectual is a dying breed. Our society demands Dan Brown, James Patterson and, God forbid, Katie Price. Reading, once reserved for the middle and upper classes, is now an activity for the masses. Serial beer moths, such as Harry Potter and Stephanie Meyer's Twilight, have introduced children and teenagers across the globe to the wonders of the written word. But what's the point if they spend the rest of their lives reading the drivel that pollutes the list of bestsellers? It's important for readers to open up to classical literature before the writers of the future give in to laziness and routine. Why bother with experimentation when you can sell the same story over and over again? Literature always been about originality. Let's compare it to music. Great literature is a vehicle for expression. There's a difference between Bob Dylan and Beyonce, and there's a difference between Joseph Conrad and Dan Brown. Why bother reading a novel that was written to entertain the masses? Good fiction should push the established boundaries, not settle safely in the middle. The brilliant writers of the past have been forgotten, and the best of our generation are overshadowed. We live in an age where trends are worshipped like religion, and libraries are full of books without souls. Literature has evolved into a popularity contest, and it's difficult to tell who's winning. The problem with repeating the same formula for fiction is clear to anyone with a love of the written word. It's easy to get halfway through a crime novel before you realise that you've already read it, or so we're told. Try doing that with Oliver Twist or On the Road. For a good writer, words flow like water. Our store of literature is in danger of stagnation. It's easy to say that there are a finite number of plots, but plots are like stars. We discover new ones daily and we'll never give names to them all. Too many writers are taking the easy option and pointing their telescopes towards the sun, blinding themselves to the possibility of a new creation. They say that everyone has a novel inside them, but most have already been written. The fast-paced bestsellers that we see in airports and supermarkets are full of complications and derelicts of character development. They're called page-turners for a reason. We skim through them to find out what happens, and we're at the end before we know it. If literature is music, reading the trash that lines the bookshelves of the masses is like listening to the sugar babes, pleasing to the eye or the ear, but there's no substance. In literature, like in music and film, there's a difference between the writers that write for pleasure and those that write for money and fame. Note from Pamelise Harris, my editor, particularly indie authors. Some just write to see their names in print and have fan bases even though they're putting out underdeveloped first drafts because they'd rather produce quantity rather than make the time for a proper edit. End of rant. Katie Price, aka Jordan, released her first novel in 2006 after flashing her breasts in newspapers across the country. Before long, she confessed that she played no part in its creation. Dan Brown creates interesting plots full of intrigue and suspense, and they bring out the conspiracy theorists in all of us. Unfortunately, his writing lets him down. We're not saying that all modern literature is worthless, just that the inventive and unique is overshadowed by the cheaply printed mass market paperbacks that, metaphorically speaking, belong on pirate DVDs and nightclub sound systems. If this is the direction that modern literature is taking, we want no part of it. Recommended further reading. Modern Literature. Misery by Stephen King, The Complete Mouse by Art Spiegelman, The Ruby and the Smoke by Philip Pullman, Fight Club by Chuck Paulinick, The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty, Trainspotting by Irvin Welsh, Battle Royale by Kushan Takami, Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett, Book of Dave by Will Self, The Essential Spike Milligan by Spike Milligan, Classics, 1984 by George Orwell, Our Man in Havana by Graham Greene, Howl and Other Poems by Allen Ginsberg, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, Dracula by Bram Stoker, Notes from the Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence, and On the Road by Jack Kerouac.